Welcome everyone, my name is Brandon Summers. I'm the PFR lead here at our Henderson, Kentucky location. With me today, I've got Luke Wilson. He's our PFR technician here at this site. And today we're gonna to talk to you about a new study we have on wheat this year, and that is our nitrogen tip study. So Luke does most of the spraying here, and we just made this application earlier this week. We'll let him talk about some of his experiences from the cab. Hi everybody. Like Brandon said, this year we're looking at two different tips or in the nitrogen study on wheat. Uh, we're looking at a Schaefer Stream Bar and a T-Jet SJ7. Now there's going to be a video that's going to play, but we're going to look at the T-Jet SJ7. So architecturally, this is just a regular sprayer tip that's got seven holes in the bottom. So whenever that sprayer turns on, it's all originating from the bottom of that tip and it's going out. So that pattern is meant to cover a 30 inch spacing at a 30 inch boom height. Now with the Schaefer Stream Bar here in this next video, as you guys can see, it's on a 15 inch spacing and it, regardless of boom height, that's the uh, you know, spacing it's gonna have. It's not relying on being 30 inches from the ground or 20 or even 40. Uh, that's one of the main things we really saw about that tip early on was that the pattern wasn't relying on the boom height. Now Brandon, you wanna show a little illustration of what happens when that changes? Yeah, so as you can see in the video, these are gonna represent our uh, stream bars here. You can see the nitrogen dropping down. These, this right here is gonna represent our T-Jet tip. You can see it kind of radiating down in kind of a rainbow effect. And what we wanted to demonstrate here is if we draw our ground level in right here, you can see we're getting pretty uniform application out of our T-Jet tips. You can see they're meeting right there. Let's just go ahead and say that's 30 inches. And you can see this has been uniform as well. Now, if we raise our boom up and all of a sudden our ground height is down here, you can see we start getting a lot of overlap right here and vice versa. So if we get less than 30 inches, all of a sudden we're leaving gaps out there. And that's not real good for our wheat because now we start leaving some streaks out there where we're getting too much nitrogen or we're not getting any at all. So this is one of the reasons we really like the stream bars. Uh, we've never taken this to yield before, so this is the first time we're really excited to see if we can tell the difference in our plots. So Luke, is there anything else that we saw from these applications earlier this week? So aside from the boom height aspect, uh, just a couple things is that, you know, we don't always have the perfect day when we're out spraying. Now, when it comes to nitrogen, um, you know, in a little bit breezier condition, whenever you've got that dribble type tip that's going to originate from a single point and go out in a fan, uh, with that those breezy conditions there's going to be a little bit more room for that nitrogen to move around whenever your wind speed goes up with that Schaefer stream bar you got a little bit more pressure behind it with it being a more direct path there's not quite as much variability in seeing where that's going to land at with that being said whenever you're working in 300 foot strips like me and brandon do the majority of our time here at the farm uh, you're going to see a more uniform pattern across your pressure differences. So when we start in a plot, if you're driving four and a half miles an hour and your uh, pressure is at 25 pounds or so, you know, it doesn't matter if, you know, that pressure is at that or if it, you're driving six miles an hour in the middle of the plot, you know, at a 35 pound pressure, that uh, pattern is going to stay the same and there's not going to be any surges, for lack of a better term, and where that nitrogen is going to end up whenever it hits the ground. So we're excited to bring this yield data to you this summer. We uh, can't wait to see what the combine says when we get into it this fall. But until then, we'd encourage you to like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to anyone on the PFR team or your local BEX representative, and we'd be happy to answer those for you. Thank you.